which of the following is a factor of the polynomial 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. So first of all, uh, let's talk about what a factor is. What a factor is means that if we multiply some things together, then we'll, uh, well, we're dividing a thing into its parts that can be multiplied together again to get the thing back. So in this case, the parts that we are dividing it into take this form. Uh, here, I'll fill in all the, the details of it in just a minute. But basically, we're uh, dividing it into two parts that are kind of equal to uh, some number times x plus some uh, uh, just integer value or you know decimal value whatever a real number b times that whole thing times c times x plus another number d so there should be some relationship here where when i multiply all these together i get 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. and because it's the acts we can be safe to assume that you know these numbers could be decimal numbers they actually could be but because it's the act they're probably going to be integers so there'll be a one or a two or a three and we won't see some number like 1.796 you know, et cetera, because they wouldn't give you a problem like that that would require, for instance, a calculator to solve on the exam. So we know that they're going to be whole numbers. Now, let's try to figure out what A, B, C, and D might be. So there's two tricks in figuring this out. So let's imagine that I'm multiplying together these two components. Uh, when I multiply together, for instance, I'm going to have to multiply A times X and C times X. So I'm going to have this equation a times c times x squared and if we look carefully when we multiply those two together that's the only part of this equation that has an x squared term and here's we have 2x squared we know that the x squared part must come only from the multiplication of a and c if we divide both these sides of these equations by x squared what we get is that 2 must be equal to a times c and that provides us an important clue. We know that there's only a couple different numbers we can multiply together to get two because it's a prime. Specifically, uh, A might be a two or a one and C might be a two or a one. We're multiplying together a two and a one. That was mu must make up the first term here. And if we look down at these equations, most of them start with a two, or in this case an F, there's a missing one here that they didn't write but k doesn't it starts with a three well we can't if we multiply three times something we're not going to get two unless we're using a decimal and so we can already eliminate that now even if i didn't have time to solve the problem i would now take a guess because i'll I'm likely to get a better score you know with uh, if i can guess of four possible answers so more clues here. Well, let's look at a second part of multiplying together these two equations. Let's imagine now that we're multiplying the uh, B part times the D part. So here we have B times D. And the important part to realize here is that this is the only part of the equation that is not multiplied by x in some way. It's the only part that can possibly explain this negative 5 here. And that means that what uh, B and D are, there's only a couple possible ways they could be divided up. One of them must be negative, and then one must be a 5, and one must be a 1 because they're prime numbers, and we're assuming that they're integers. So once again, we can eliminate a possibility here. Most of these have a 1 or a 5 as the uh, B or D term, but G does not 2x minus 3 so now i have even a better guess and i've done hardly any work here so i recommend learning how to do that even if you don't know how to solve this type of problem but the final part to figure out here is what's equal to this negative 3x portion and what this is equal to is when i multiply uh, a times x times d which i'm gonna have to do or b times c times x so let's write that out that's the uh, negative 3x portion of this equation must be equal to some combination of a uh, times d times x, a times d times x, uh, plus c times b times x. So plus c, let's write that out, c is orange, c times b times x. All right, and once again, we can uh, simplify that equation. So let's go ahead and divide everything by x here. And what we have uh, is negative three, and forgive me if I stop switching colors here, is equal to a times d 
plus C times B. Right. All right. So now let's go ahead. Actually, I should, I should switch up colors. Eh? So it's equal to A times D plus C times B plus C times B. And go ahead and work this through in a little more detail to convince yourself that that's exactly right. But that's exactly right. And so now we have to ask, how can we satisfy uh, each of these three important equations, this guy, this guy, and this guy, all at the same time? And so you're going to want to play with the different combinations. But the trick really is to look at this final one. So we know A or C, one of those is a 2 or a 1. So let's just go ahead and pretend as if A was a 1 off the bat. If A is a 1, then C would be a 2. It would have to be. And if we look at this, how are we going to get this equal to negative 3, given that D and B have to be, one of them has to be a 1 and one has to be a negative 5? Well, let's say uh, uh, I made D equal to the 1. So that would be 1 times 1 plus 2 times negative 5. That's going to be negative 9. That's not negative 3. Uh, let's switch it. Let, let, let's go ahead and say, you know, maybe, maybe D is the negative 1. So 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times 5, well, now that's equal to 9, so that's not the right answer. And if we kind of play with the possibilities, there's only a handful of them, what we'll realize pretty quickly is that only one of them solves it. And that's if D here is equal to negative 5 and the B is equal to 1. B is equal to 1. So let's do the math here. 1 times negative 5 is equal to negative 5 and 2 times 1 is equal to 2, and negative 5 plus 2 is equal to negative 3. That's true. That's correct. So these uh, options would work for A, B, C, and D. Now let's confirm that they work up above as well, just to, to double check our work. So what we're saying is if B is 1, so let's imagine that we replace this with, uh, this is equal to 1 times uh, negative 5, 1 times negative 5, yes, that's equal to negative 5, that one, that one checks out. And then A times C, we said that was 1 and 2, uh, this is equal to 1 times 2, 1 times 2, and yeah, that checks out as well. So it looks like we got a uh, working solution here to the problem by making A equal to 1, by making B equal to 1 as well, 1 as well, and then by making C equal to 2, and by making D equal to a negative 5. So if we actually write these out in a little more detail, what we have is, uh, I'll just write it down here, 1 times, uh, let me write out the x part of my equation, so we have x's, plus, and then this other one's going to be x, and this is going to be a minus. So 1 times x plus 1 times that whole equation times 2 minus 5. And this is a good factorization for it. And uh, that will equal 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. You can multiply it out to confirm. But what we see swiftly is that this part of the equation here is the right answer, H. And what I hope you realize is that we can get even close to the right answer even without completely factoring it. But if you practice factoring, you should get fast enough to even get all the way to the right answer.